cool guys. So I just want to start off just by saying welcome to everybody. Um, once again, we had the live event. We're not looking to sell you guys anything. We're not trying to get you guys to sign up for any coaching. Um, all we're trying to do is just provide massive value in the community. So today we're actually going to be breaking down the listing presentation and uh, giving you guys tips, tricks, and step-by-step -step how to present like a pro. Um, my story is a little bit interesting because when I actually got started in real estate, um, I went on about a hundred listing presentations and I in a year and I probably only took about five of them and it was extremely painful. I remember doing a video um, and just kind of like saying this is not going to happen again. I remember there was a time when Harold Powell beat me on a listing presentation. I was like, man, this is never going to happen again. So uh, our intention here today is just to give, to kind of share value and to help you guys improve your listing presentation and then help improve your business, improve your life. I met a gentleman by the name of Aaron Novello and he started mentoring me and he started kind of saying, hey, look, instead of saying this, say that. Instead of doing this, do this. And that's really when my career started to change. So a hundred listing presentations, maybe only taking five of them, that's like a 5%. Now I'm up to like anywhere from 85 to 95 percent, meaning anytime I go on a listing presentation, I'm absolutely confident if they're signing a contract that I am the one that they're going to be signing up with. So today we're going to break it down. Welcome, Mr. Novello. How you doing, my man? That's a privilege and a pleasure, man, for sure. And we're going to go ahead and you know get this party started. Again, 137 people in the room. Welcome, everybody. I found myself nine months into selling real estate. And I was trying to figure it out on my own. And mm -hmm. I wasn't doing a good job of it. I had only made 13,000 bucks trying to figure it out on my own. And I made a decision. And the decision was, is that I wanted to partner with a top agent in a geographic area where I was selling real estate, which was Gainesville, Florida at the time. And that was helpful for me for two reasons, right? The first reason is obviously it got me access to some instruction, and to leads, right? The second reason is, is that guy gave me a very up close, upfront, personal view of the difference between working with buyers and working with sellers. So here I was hustling, trying to schedule appointments, like, you know, running around from one showing to the next, like trying to keep track of keys and trying to write offers and get them accepted. And he was back at the office chilling behind the computer, waiting for offers to come in. And I made an executive decision in that moment. I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do this business, that's what I wanna do, right? I wanna be a dominant listing agent in the marketplace. I didn't know how I was gonna do that, but I recognized that that's where all the leverage was. That's where um, really I wanted to hang out. So what I was aware of is that that was very true and it's still very true today. And as our game has changed radically, which it has, right? Since I started selling real estate in 2006, basically with the internet, all of these platforms have pushed into our space, whether it's Zillow, Redfin, you know, Homelight, um, Effective Agents, like all of these different platforms. And they're all trying to sell their own products or services, or they're all trying to feed us with leads, right? And taking referral fees in order to, um, participate. And what I'm clear on is that they all need one thing like oxygen to breathe. What they need is data. They need listings, right? So if I can continue to be a prodigious provider of data, I will continue to be disproportionately rewarded for my efforts. Being that that's the case, the system doesn't need buyer's agents. It doesn't. Like you can hire people and pay them a salary, which is essentially where that's moving towards. So what me and Jose are going to do is, you know, really focus our time and energy on that. And once I realized that, I spent the next 16 years of my life obsessively and obnoxiously studying sales, persuasion, neurolinguistic programming, went on 10,000 plus, you know, hours of listing presentations, all in an attempt to master that side of the business. And what that has provided me with is a wonderful lifestyle, right? Where I've sold 2000 homes in my career, over a hundred a year for the last 12 years in a row. 80% um, of that business is listing sold. 
and earning multiple millions of dollars being a top listing agent. I'm going to personally run through the actual listing presentation. And what me and Jose decided what would be the most instructive is in running through the listing presentation, it'll be like very informative, right? So I'll run through it and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to tell you what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. We used to, as agents, have a monopoly on information. There was a time, 50, even 30 years ago, where consumers had no access to any information about real estate. Is that the environment that we're still in? And the answer is, nope. is no. What now becomes important is helping them to self-discover what's true. It's more a collaborative effort. There's three forms of communication that are available to us. So one is paternalistic or authoritative, like I know and you don't. So that would be like, I study homes and prices every day, therefore I assume you'll listen to me at a price that causes to sell. That would also be something like, hey, Jose, specifically, what causes you to believe that your home is this mount? The second form of communication is like informative, which is like, hey, you have all the information, like, what do you think? Now, we just came out of an environment over the last 18 to 24 months where you can get away with that. You're like, hey, you have all the information, you're studying the stuff, you're looking at all these sites that give you estimates of value. So what do you think? And they would be like, well, I really think we should go at 650, Jose. And Jose was like, well, uh, you know, I, I appreciate that. Seems a little high, but let's give it a shot. And then we'd have sell for 700. At the same time, I would also propose to you that that's not also what people really want. Like you could go to WebMD right now and gather a lot of information, but you still want a physician to probably review it and give you their opinion. And the third form of communication is interpretive, which is like, listen, Jose, I'm aware that, you know, you've probably went on these sites that gave, give estimates of value. So you may have an idea of realistically what you were thinking price-wise. I want to be clear that my intention is to help you to maximize value and get you every penny possible. I'm also the mindset I'd much rather earn your business with integrity, being honest and straightforward about what's reasonable and realistic versus promising you something I know is not going to happen and not be able to deliver. So we're going to look at some information together as a team. And what's gonna to come to the surface is not a pinpoint to the penny in terms of price. Instead, it's gonna be a tight, realistic range as to what's going to be reasonable. Now you have two different approaches. Ask yourself, as a consumer, you in 2022, when you've done all your homework and research, if somebody walks in and says, don't you know who I am? <laughs> I'm kind of a big deal. I believe, I think, I, you know, we can get this and blah, 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 blah. That's one approach. The second approach is what I, what I just demonstrated. Here's my question to you is, as a consumer, which one makes you feel like you're actually in control? Which one feels collaborative? Which one feels like we're on the same team, right? Versus what, the other one that makes it combative, like we're fighting with each other and I know and you don't. Like I'm smart and you're stupid, right? So we have to make a decision. And I am telling you guys, if you are still utilizing that other approach of trying to come from a place of authority in an environment in which they have access to the same information that you do and they're studying it more than you do, you're making a mistake. Like one time I went to a listing presentation. I was told to close multiple times until the seller signed the contract. I closed multiple times, like maybe like five to 10 times. But the reality is I wasn't listening to what they wanted. I wasn't really presenting to what their real needs were. And I was very authoritative. And I remember leaving that presentation proud that I, that I closed so many times because that was the message that I was being taught. I was like, you got to close, close, close. And I remember leaving there, like I did everything I could. I knew my scripts verbatim. I did this. But it was so foolish because I lost. I really lost. They're looking for collaboration. They're looking for interpretive ways of presenting because as information becomes free, specialized knowledge becomes more powerful. And now what we're going to do is we're going to shift into the actual presentation itself. Okay. And there's three different stages of the listing presentation. There's from the time that you hit the door to the time you start to talk about price. The second segment of the listing presentation is where you're talking about price. And then the third segment of the listing presentation is where you're handling objections and closing. So when we hit the, from the time we hit the door to the time we start to talk about price. So we hit the door, let's say it's in person, you knock on the door and you have to remember to smile. I don't know about you, Jose. Hey there, Aaron Novello, uh, pleasure to meet you. Did you, do you want me to take my shoes off? That's just respectful. Like I'm in somebody else's space and they're like, no, 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 that's cool. So what I'd like to do is, if it's okay is just take a quick look around the home because somebody's going to be in control in that dynamic and I want it to be me. And they're like, yeah, so great. So I'm noticing that the home is really tastefully furnished, right? So when we have offers come in, are we going to be including the contents? 
or do you want to take that with you to your next destination? We're assumptively closing. And they're going to be like, well, no, I mean, I, I think we want to take it with us. Okay, great. I'll make a note of that. And then we continue to walk through the home and I'm going to assumptively close a second time. So if I remember correctly, Jose, you shared with me that you're not planning on making any changes or modifications before I start to bring buyers through. Is that correct? Who's bringing buyers through? I am. So that's two assumptive closes. You know, by assumptively closing, I'm mentally moving the process forward for them. I'm going to take control again and say, okay, so we can sit down here in the kitchen if that works for you. Because if I don't do that, I'm going to end up on the couch, all scrunched up with a fucking little dog in my lap. And it's going to be awkward. Now, just a little uh, tip for everybody. Before I walk in, in, in the house, like I'm in my car, I review some of the comps really quickly. I, I uh, show up to the door. Obviously, we've got a big smile on our face. I'm aware, though. Like I do look around the front. I pay attention. Like If they don't have their shoes on and all the shoes are to the right, that's when I will offer to take off my shoes. You know, If they had their shoes on, because there's certain cultures as well, too. And then usually what will happen is people will say, great, they'll go with me or they'll basically say, yeah, go ahead and take your tour, basically. And that kind of tells me a little bit about their personality. It's very easy for me to say, hey, look, I'm presenting with an iPad. It would actually be easier if you guys sit on this side of the table versus having to move the iPad back and forth as well, too. So for me, the iPad is actually a tool to be able to have a little bit more control of the presentation. I always like to begin these conversations just by asking a few quick questions just to make sure we're on the same page. That'd be okay? And like, yeah, that's great. Mm -hmm. So the first question I have, which I'm pretty positive I know the answer to based on our conversation and preparation for connecting is you guys have definitely decided that you're going to sell this home. You're not interested in holding on to it or maybe doing something else with it, like renting it out or something of that nature. Is that correct? And then that leads me to my second question, which I'm also pretty sure I know the answer to is you wanna position the property price-wise to sell you definitely don't want to give it away, that's for sure. At the same time, you're not interested in having it sit on the market for like five or six months just testing the market. Is that correct? And then that leads me to my third question. You know, I'm aware I sent you over some information in preparation for connecting. I'm sure you did some due diligence. You checked me out online. You saw track record reviews, things of that nature. So have you guys already decided that you would like for me to help you with the sale? Now that's three closes, by the way, if you're counting. Okay, the two of something close when we hit the door and that's a third one. Now, when you get to this point, they're either going to say yes, no, or maybe. If they say yes, you do the little happy dance inside. Yay! And it's like, great. So we really only have to focus on a couple things today during our time together. The first is your motivation. The second issue is the price. And we go right into it. If they say no or maybe, we don't leave it at that. Okay? If they say no or maybe, you're going to say, okay, that's no problem. I know this is a big decision. You want to make sure you're making the best decision possible. I want to be clear, Jose, that is my intention. So provided that what I say to you makes sense and you do feel comfortable and confident with me that I can help you accomplish your goals and objectives and would look out for your best interest, I have all of the appropriate paperwork with me and I'm prepared to go to work for you today. Fair enough? If you're counting, that's four closes. We haven't talked about price. We haven't talked about terms and conditions. We haven't talked about anything. Now, they're going to say like, okay, that's fair enough. And then you'll say something like, okay. And along those lines, in terms of the agent that you ultimately decide to partner with to help you with the sale, you know, you shared with me, you were looking for a few things. Somebody has got a great track record, somebody who can help you to position the property price-wise to make sure you maximize value, somebody who could perhaps refer you to an agent in Texas where you guys are moving to, and then somebody who would look out for your best interest, make sure all the T's are crossed and I's are dotted and help you to maximize value and get top dollar. Is there anything else you'd be looking for from me today, Jose, that would cause you to feel comfortable and confident to proceed and put me to work. It's five closes, guys, before we've talked about anything. We haven't talked about price, terms and conditions, nothing. And they're gonna say, well, yeah, we wanna to talk to you about the commission or like maybe the length of the agreement. You say, okay, that's no problem. So I've made a note of those two things and it really sounds as though, provided we can check off all those boxes and we can come to an agreement as far as terms and conditions are concerned, and I'm sure we will, that certainly won't be a reason why we don't do business, that we're gonna be able to get started today. And I'm super excited to have that opportunity. That's six. Uh, at the culmination of our time together, there are a few potential outcomes. The first, which we really seem to be moving in that direction, seven. You guys may decide to list the home with me. And again, I'm very excited to have that opportunity and ready to go to work for you ASAP. The second potential outcome is there's an outside chance for whatever reason, you may decide not to list the home with me. And the third outcome, and this was just as important as the other to Jose as if for any reason at all, if I honestly felt, truly felt that I would not be able to help you get what you wanted 
in the time that you wanted, then I may decide to very humbly decline the opportunity to list your home. The reason I struggled with it is that I would notice that sometimes when I would take too long into getting into the price, sometimes people would cross their arms or whenever I would say things like, um, one of three things will happen is one, you may decide to work with me. I'll notice that people would get tense. So, and for the people that saw obviously the live listing presentation, it's, it's a presentation, but for me, we started off the same way, which is, Hey, look, I just want to start off by saying, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. I understand that there's a lot of choices and I appreciate being one of the considerations, obviously for the job of selling your property. Um, and I basically just jump right into the market analysis. I'll be like, look, what I've done in preparation for our meetings, I prepared what we call a comparative market analysis. I do want to be clear that none of the properties will ever be exactly the same. They're all going to vary based on uh, size, condition, location, square footage. Therefore, the market analysis is not going to be giving us a pinpoint to the dollar number. Instead, it's going to give us a pretty good range, and then it just comes down to strategy. One strategy, we can start off a little bit higher to leave a little bit of room to negotiate. Second strategy is we can start off a little bit lower. Sometimes that drives a little bit more traffic, and sometimes that leads to a little bit of a, of a bidding war. So a lot of people, they want to focus purely on just the words that I'm saying, but they're not looking at the process underneath. He, once he understood the process underneath, he was able to kind of, you know, customize it to customize something it to that would stuff. work for me. This gives us, remember I told you like the listing presentation I shared with you, it's from the time I hit the door to the time I start to talk about price. So we've walked to, through to this point. Now what it leads to, once I do that last takeaway code, it's like, great. So what I'd like to do is to go over some of those questions that I asked you over the phone, just to ensure I could do a great job for you. Would that be okay? Like, yeah, that's fine. So you were kind enough to share with me, Jose, that the main reason you were selling this home is you're looking to move to Texas. Is that right? Yep, that's right. And the reason for the move was a job relocation. Is that correct? Yep. And your employer would like or need you to be there in the next 90 to 120 days. Is that correct? Yeah. What that means is that we would have to be under contract really in the next like 30 to 45 days. What would happen on the outside chance if we were still here 90 to 120 days from now and the home wasn't sold? What would that mean for you and your family? Oh man, that wouldn't be good. Like, I don't want to leave without my wife and kids. They'd have to stay behind. Okay. And that's something that we're going to really focus on when we have the conversation about the strip strategically, how to position the property price-wise. Because price is a strategy in an attempt to get the most, and it also affects timing. And then you also shared with me that the home is free and clear. Is that right? Yep. And you're not interested in acting like a bank and holding a note for a new buyer. You just want for me to help you to get all the cash out. Is that correct? Yep. That's correct. Again, another assumptive close. You know, I'm aware that sometimes families, they like to divide the communication. Sometimes they want me to communicate with just one, uh, you know, individual versus both. Just so I'm clear as we proceed with this, showings, offers, things of that nature. Do you want me to channel the communication to one of you or do you both want to be involved with that? And let's say they say, no, we both want to be involved. It's like, okay, well, then Jessica, um, what's the best email address for you? What are they doing? giving me information. The moment they start to give me information, what's happening in their mind? They're, per, they're moving forward in the process. How many hours notice would you need, Jose, prior to us you know, showing the property? And they're gonna tell me, what am I doing? I'm mentally helping them move forward in the process. I'm using this as a mechanism for assumptively closing and moving things forward. Once they give me all that information, it's like, okay, well, I'm crystal clear on the situation and what you're looking to accomplish and why. And I feel supremely confident that provided the opportunity, we can help you to accomplish your goals and objectives in the time frame that you want. Now, I prepared for you and I sent over to you in preparation for connecting what we call a competitive market analysis, a CMA, and the purpose of which it's really an attempt to make a very educated guess with regards to value, which is exceptionally helpful to us, Jose, because the neighbors, they've actually done us a huge favor. Do you know what it is? And they're going to be like, well, I guess they like tested the market. Yeah, it's exactly right. They tested the market for us at certain prices and it's not working. And that's exceptionally helpful to us now that we're seeing the marketplace begin to shift and change with interest rates going up rapidly and things of that nature. Like that's good data for us to go to, to learn from. The second piece of data and information is what is actually all like actually sold and closed most recently let's say within the last six months, with a preference being the last couple months, if that's that is available to us. And why do you think that's helpful to us? And they'll be like, well, that's what buyers and sellers have been agreeing to, 100%. And what something's worth, as you know, I don't need to tell you, that's what somebody's willing to pay for it, right? And then from there, it's gonna come down to strategy because how we choose to price a property 
is a strategy in an attempt to get the most. And we'll go over those strategies because I want you to feel comfortable with the one we end up choosing. And I can promise you this, Jose, like whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%. So the purpose of the analysis, it's really an attempt to make an educated guess with regards to value. Now, notice my choice of words. I'm saying educated guess. How different is that than presenting authoritatively? Like, this is what it is. I know and you don't. Are you prepared to list a home with me today at my price? It's a completely different, right? I'm purposefully and intentionally using words, right? So it's like the purpose of the analysis, it's really an attempt to make an educated guess with regards to value. So my question is, is, are you familiar with the way buyers determine value for this type of home in this type of community? And they'll be like, they're either going to say, yeah, they're going to shop around or I don't know. Whatever they say, you'll say, yeah, I mean, essentially what they're going to do is comparison shop. So they're going to look at the price that we ultimately decide to set on the property, the features and amenities that it has to offer or lack thereof. And they're going to compare that with the features and amenities of other properties that are on the market for sale right now and ones that have sold and closed most recently. And from all of that information, the buyers are gonna make a determination where they feel comfortable making you an offer. Now, why is it important for them to be mentally and psychologically in the frame of the buyer? Two reasons. One is we, our brains, like guys, if you wanna be a serious student, you need to study persuasion, you need to study psychology, okay? Our brains have quirks. And they prevent us from seeing information accurately. One of those quirks is called the endowment effect. The endowment effect, which it's quantifiable and measurable, because it's mine, I think it's worth more. So by setting it up this way, I'm putting you in the frame of the buyer, which is going to cause you to view the information more accurately. The question to be asking yourself as a buyer, not a seller, is if you were going to buy this place all over again, where you would feel comfortable making an offer that you believe would be reflective of fair market value, in his brain is like, I have to be fair. Like as you're preparing for what comps to go, like I've seen it where, because uh, I've been on other presentations where another agent brings like a list of 20 properties and he'll say, well, look, the average or the median of all 20 properties is 550,000. In my opinion, that's like a very poor way of like arriving at a value. And the reason I feel that it's poor is it doesn't a lot of times factor in like some of the upgrades or some of the different features and benefits that a property may have. And I'm presenting in a way where it's like, look, I, I, at some point, properties were selling for a million bucks. Look, this property sold for a million bucks right around the block from yours. The only difference is that it sold in February. And in February, the interest rates were 3%. Right now, they're 6%. So I just want to be clear with you that at some point they were selling at a million bucks. All I'm doing right there is I'm setting them up to be like, hey, look, I see the fact that there are properties selling at a million. We're not there anymore. And then I start to proceed down to a lot of pendings. Right now, like a lot of the comps that I'm selecting are pendings. Properties are in escrow. And the reason I'm selecting that is because that gives me a very realistic picture of where the marketplace is. And then it's also really important that you understand like the economic machine and how it works and what they can expect moving forward. Cause we just had a mm -hmm. third fed funds rate hike. Uh, they've never raised the fed funds rate this fast, this quick, right? Uh, having two 75 basis point rate hikes. They've never done that. We've had three and the um, that affects ultimately the bond markets, which affects the treasury markets and the 10 year treasury note, which is what mortgage rates are tied to is climbing rapidly and fast. Like we're going to have 7% interest rates, 8% interest rates by the end of the year. You can't guide people if you don't know that information. We've set up how to have the conversation about price. And I shared with Jose like, okay, um, you know, it's really helpful to look at this through the eyes of the buyer. And the question to be asking yourself as you review this is, if you were going to buy this place all over again, having seen what's on the market, not selling, seen what's sold and closed most recently in light of the economic environment and interest rates, where you personally would feel comfortable making an offer that you believe would be reflective of fair market value, because more likely than not, a buyer would feel pretty similar to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to review the information together as a team, Jose. We'll see that realistic range emerge. We'll discuss strategy, because pricing a property very much so is a strategy and attempt to get the most. We'll go over the options that you have at your disposal, because I want you to feel comfortable with the one we end up choosing. I can answer any questions you may have. And then provided that it all makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident, we can take the next steps and take care of the appropriate paperwork. Fair enough. Notice, closing again, right? And they're like, yeah, that's cool. Okay, great. And then we start to present. And the way that you present, you know, me personally, I keep it super simple. I'm not showing them graphs and charts and, you know, no, like, me uh, neither. you know, like price per square foot, all that nonsense. We're just doing three actives, like three closed, maybe one or two pendings now that market dynamics have changed. 
So I'm going to go over actives. You see this one. This one's off, you know, Banana Street. It's two streets over. Uh, we can see here it's got the same bedrooms and baths you have. It's got the same square footage. Now, if you guys are presenting with sheets of paper, stop it. This is the 21st century, okay? So we bring the iPad and we can zoom in and say, hey, let's take a look at these pictures. Now, having looked at this, we can see here the kitchens, you know, it's really redone just like yours is. Both bathrooms are redone. So we in agreement that this home is pretty similar to yours. Yeah, it is. Size and shape. Cool. Now we can see here in the top right-hand corner, do you see how much they're asking? Okay. And you see that little arrow there? Do you know what that means? Well, no. It means that they've adjusted the price. You see, they actually started at 600 and they did that two months ago and they've had to lower the price twice and they still haven't sold it yet. Now, here's my question to you. What do you think the buying public is telling them about their price and product? Now, notice what my head's doing while I'm saying that. What do you think the buying public is telling them about their price and product? I'm just gently shaking my head no. The marketplace is showing them that for what they have to offer, they're asking too much. Otherwise, they would have sold it. Now, if they are sincere, if they have a sincere desire like you do, like a compelling reason to actually sell the property, what do you think they're going to have to do to sell it? Did I tell them that they're going to have to adjust the price? Nope, they told me. So then we're going to get to the close and we're going to show them some clothes and you're going to be like, yep. And you see how much it closed for? And they're going to be like, yeah, closed for like 525. Yeah. And you see when it sold, sold last month. Mm -hmm. And then I'm also reintroducing the idea of fairness again. Where do you think you would feel comfortable making an offer that you believe would be reflective of fair market value? And then they're going to be like, they're either going to say something reasonable, unreasonable, or they're going to hem and haw. So now the question is, is just where we position the property, like as far as strategically price-wise. And we have two strategies at our disposal. And whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%. So the first strategy is we can start higher than that. The logic behind that strategy is I can always come down. I can't go back up. And I want to leave room to negotiate. Negotiate. Now, why am I saying that out loud is because they're thinking it. There are a few considerations though, and I'd like to review them with you so that way you're fully equipped and you can decide what you feel is best. The first consideration is that strategy usually takes longer. You shared with me that your employer would like you to need or need you to be out there in the next 120 days. And that means we need to be under contract in the next 30 to 45. Oh, that would not be good. Okay, so that's not acceptable. The second consideration is where we find ourselves in the economic environment. You know, I don't know if you've noticed, but we have record high inflation. Have you felt that at the gas pump of the grocery store? And they're like, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yep. And I don't know if you're aware, but interest rates have gone up rapidly in the last nine months, faster than they have in the last 30 years. We were at 3% for a 30 year fixed mortgage in January. We're almost at 7% in September. My question to you would be is which seems more probable that 45, 60 days from now that prices will be going up exponentially and the economy will be booming? Or does it seem as though we're experiencing downward pressure? There's some economic bumpiness moving forward and volatility and, and pricing pressure on the downward side moving forward. All right, so then that leads us to our second option. You know, I've seen sellers get great results with the second option, particularly with timeframes that you're interested in accomplishing and in this marketplace as things are shifting and changing rapidly is where we see that realistic range emerge, that 520, 530 range, and we position the property very competitively. By that, what I mean is like right on the money at that 520, 525, or actually a hair below. The logic behind that strategy is we can get a lot of people interested quickly. And in doing so, we can force people to compete, maybe get more than one offer on the table. And what ends up coming to the surface is the absolute most that somebody's willing to pay. And again, whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%. My question to you is, is based on what you're looking to accomplish and why, based on the time frame you'd like to make this happen in, in light of the economic environment that we find ourselves in at the moment, which one of those two strategies do you think would serve you and your family best? Let's say that I, I say, great, based on what we see, where is the marketplace showing us that we would need to be at price-wise that would be somewhat reflective of fair market value? Let's say that we agree to that. And let's say that they go 500,000, great, I'm in agreement with that. One of my favorite closes, and I'll kind of share it with you guys, is just a calendar close. And I didn't share this at the last one just because we didn't get to it. But I'll be like, okay, great. He was so holding out other... to you. Yeah, so I'll be like this. So I'll be like, great. The only other question that I would have for you is uh, in terms of timing, like what would be an ideal date for you guys to be on the market? Now, let me tell you what I would need. Today is the 22nd, and this may be too soon for you. Um, I would need a minimum of three days from the time we take pictures to get the property on the marketplace because that's the turnaround time from our photographer to us edit the pictures virtually and for us to get all the marketing done. So, for example, and this may be too soon for you, if we had the photographer come out here tomorrow, um, if we had him come out here tomorrow, that would mean one, two, three. That would mean the earliest I could have your property on the marketplace would be Monday. 
Now, that may be too soon for you guys. Is there an ideal date that would work for you guys? And what a lot of times ends up happening, guys, is that they're going to be like, well, no, look, you know what? We're actually leaving town tomorrow. We'll be gone for all the next week. We come back on the 3rd. So it'll take us a couple days to have the property on the marketplace, or it'll have a couple days to get the property ready. So the earliest you could probably take pictures would be the 6th. I'll be like, okay, so if I take pictures on the 6th, the earliest I could have it on the market would be the 9th. Is it okay if we put it on the market on the 10th? And like, yeah, great. So at that point, and the reason I do this is that you only need a couple things to get a property on the marketplace. You need price, you need a commission, and you need a date to start date. So basically my closes are um, just price and date. If I can get a price and a date, I've got everything I need to sign a listing agreement. So at that point, I'll be like, great, uh, I'm in agreement. I, I believe the 10th is a great day to get it on the market. Do you have any other questions before we go ahead and take care of the paperwork? Or I'll say, great, the next step is I brought all the paperwork with me. I'm going to explain the paperwork to you guys, and then that will allow me to start getting everything ready to have your property on the marketplace. Those are two different ways. Now, the other thing that could happen is that like, you start going over dates, and they start like hemming and humming. They're like, ah, well, I don't really know how long it's going to take, or I don't really know like if it's going to take like a week, or maybe they're doing some work to the property. Maybe they're painting the property, or maybe they're doing some plumbing work, or maybe they're renovating the kitchen. So at that point, what I do is I'll guide them. Like, so if we know that we're going to paint the property or put carpet, I'll be like, okay, look, well, if we're going to paint the property, um, I've seen properties take about a week. If they start, like, let's say on Thursday, we're likely looking at about a minimum of a week. Let's give ourselves a couple of days of wiggle room. So the first, let's give ourselves to the third. Now, carpet usually can take a day to two days. That would mean we would have it by the fifth. Let's say we're staging it. That would be the sixth. We might even be able to get it done on the fifth. And let's say that we take pictures on the sixth. And let's say we have everything ready to go. One, two, three. That would mean the earliest we could have it on the market would be the tenth. Would that work for you? Yeah, that sounds good. So it's either one, it's going to allow them to kind of tell me what their schedule looks like, and we come up with a, a date for coming on the market, or two, I'm going to help them to formulate that game plan and guide them so that we can come up with a date, because that's one of the things that you do need for the listing agreement. You need a start date. So I started doing that, and what ended up happening is people just naturally started telling me what their plans were, and we started formulating a target date for them to come on the market. Now I've got everything I need to get a contract signed, basically. Love it, bro. And what he's doing and that's one too, of my that's one of my favorite closes ever because it's yeah. so simple. It doesn't feel like a close. You're basically helping them to formulate a game plan. Yeah, and what he's doing is the same uh, as far as like mentally helping them to move process forward now i'm aware of our time jose like i um you know i had prepared to kind of handle like some of the common objections like we need to think it over can you do it for less commission like that sort of thing i don't know if we should save it and do it for another uh time frame because i want to be respectful yeah. of everybody's time uh yeah we can you do got that a couple? I, already, I, I got a couple that are the most common but if we can get to 10 posts of like please do it now we have one two three four five six seven we have seven let's get to 20 what if they say we're not sure we want to sell? Fine. You should know that in prequel. Do it now. Do it now. Now, Christian. Now, now, Diane. Now, now. Do it now. Please. Please, Diane Keen. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'll give you the common, like, kind of three, right? So the first one is, is like, well, we appreciate you coming out, Jose. We want to take it over. I mean, I get that. It's a big decision. You guys want to make sure you're making the best decision possible. And what I find is if we take that big decision and we break it down into smaller decisions, it usually makes the bigger one easy to make. So what I'd like to do before I go, is I'd like to just go over with you the three decisions that a seller needs to make prior to putting their home on the market in hopes that doing so can help you decide what you feel is best and whatever you decide, I'll support you 100%. So the first decision, Jose, a seller needs to make prior to putting their home on the market is if they're even gonna sell it. You know, sometimes when a homeowner sees what the marketplace, what buyers and sellers have been agreeing to and what the marketplace is showing us is realistic with regards to price and what we can expect to receive, and it's not providing them with maybe what their expectation was or what they actually need from a dollars and cents perspective in order to make the move, they decide to do something different. Are either one of those options available to you, like considerations? And they're like, no, we're definitely gonna sell it. And then that leads us to the second decision that a seller needs to make prior to putting our home on the market, the price. 
Now I'm imagining Jose that you would like it to be more. I sure would as well. You know, obviously we get compensated more money, the more we help you sell it for. At the same time, are we in agreement that the marketplace is showing us somewhere around that 520, 530 number seems to be reasonable? Yeah, we're in agreement on that. Okay, great. So you've made that decision as well. And then that leaves us with the third decision is really, really just who's going to help you. I know you did some due diligence. You checked me out online. You saw our 540 plus five-star reviews. Do you feel comfortable and confident with me that not only can I help you sell this home, I would look out for your best interest? And they're like, yeah, we do. So it's like, great. So it really sounds like, Jose, you've already made the three decisions a seller needs to make prior to putting their home on the market. So may I make a suggestion? And they're like, yeah, let's do this. I mean, you're here, I'm here. Let's go ahead and take care of the appropriate paperwork. I can have the photographer out here in 24 to 48 hours and have an up and active on the market by the weekend. How does that sound? Now, when you do that, one of two things are gonna happen. They will either look at their significant other and be like, what do you think, honey? And they'll be like, yeah, he seems to really be good. Let's just go ahead and get started. Boom, and then you get started. Another option is, is you flesh out the second common objection, which is they'll say something to you like, well, what's your commission? Or the other agent said they would do it for less. And I know that you wanna net every penny possible and I'm on the same page with you. So here's my question to you, is if we can agree on the professional fee today, right? And I'm sure we can, because that won't be a reason why we don't do business. I'm sure we'll come up with something that's mutually beneficial to all parties. Would there be any other reason why we couldn't get started right now? right? It's like, yo, there's a boulder between me and Jose. There's like a barrier. I pick it up. I put it over here. I point to it. If we could agree on that thing over there, is there any other reason why we couldn't do this? And like, no, I don't think so. Great. So what were you thinking? Why am I asking what were you thinking? Because now we're negotiating and I want them to speak first. And they're like, well, you know, the other guy said he'd do it at 4%. And Jose, he's a master at this shit. He'll be like, wow. <laughs> I love it what he does is he's like, Oh, wow, really? Like, wait, you mean like four total? <laughs> like, I've watched them do this shit and I love it. People are like shocked. They're like, yeah, like that's what I was thinking. It's like, oh, wow. Hmm. Well, here's what's interesting is I would never want to put you in a situation that wasn't beneficial to you as a homeowner. Can I explain to you what I mean? Well, yeah. Well, through no fault of your own or mine, market dynamics have really shifted and changed. We've seen inventory go up by a factor of three here in Camarillo or in Ventura, right? We have like almost a three month supply where last year we had less than a month supply at this time. So that means that buyers have more homes to choose from. And also the perspective pool of buyers have gotten smaller. Can I explain to you why? Well, yeah. Well, we went from 3% interest rates to 7% interest rates in the same time. So what that means, and this, this is gonna be old what I'm gonna show you, but it, you can update it. Somebody that was approved for 800 is now approved for like 600. So what do you think that does to the pool of prospective buyers that we're competing for with other listings? Well, it shrinks them. Yeah, so that means it's a much more competitive environment. And the professional fee is one of the tools that we use to market the property in terms of what we offer out to another agent that's ready and willing to be able to purchase. I'm curious, did that agent that say they do it at 4%, did they share with you what they would be offering out as a co broker to other agents? It's like, no, they didn't even mention it to us. Hmm. That's a little concerning, right? Because right now in your price point, there are 10 other homes that are available for sale, four of which are in your neighborhood. And of those 10, seven of them are offering out what's customary in our market, which is like 2.5 to 3%. And the others are offering out some sort of discount, like 2% or less. Now, if, if you were a full-time commission-based salesperson, I mean, honestly, which properties would you be more excited about showing and selling? One's offering out two and a half to three or something offering less. Well, they'll be like, well, the one's offering more. Yeah, and why is that? Well, because you make what you're accustomed to making. Exactly. I mean, can you imagine if your employer came to you and said, hey, listen, Lenny, uh, we're actually going to want you to do the same job but make less money. How would you feel about that? So just by you saying that demonstrates that you recognize that the professional fee is very much so a marketing tool in terms of what we offer out, right? Because if we want to maximize value, are we going to accomplish that by limiting exposure or broadening it? Exactly, by broadening it. So the professional fee on our side to list the property is, boom, you say what you want. 2.5, 3%, whatever it is in your marketplace that you want. So let's say it's like, you know, 3%, great. So now what we're really having a conversation about is what we're gonna be offering out to another agent if they can find us a buyer that's ready, willing, and able to purchase. And we have a few options and whatever you decide, I'll support you. The first option is, is we offer out what they're accustomed to, two and a half, maybe 3%. And in doing so, we will broaden the exposure 
which increases the chances that we'll maximize value and get as much as we possibly can and make sure we're being competitive in that fierce environment for buyers pools, which is shrinking rapidly as interest rates increase. Okay. The second option is, is we offer at a discount, 2%, maybe less. And in doing so, we would limit exposure, which could end up affecting how much we can get. And keep in mind, you shared with me, Jose, you want to be sold and closed in the next 90 to 120 days. And, you know, the issue is, is we don't want to create any friction and give people, we want to give people the path of least resistance, right? So my question to you is, is based on what you're looking to accomplish and why, based on the time frame you'd like to make this happen in, which one of those options do you think would serve you and your family best? And then quiet. And they're either going to do one of two things. They're going to be like, well, I guess we can offer out like two and a half or whatever. Now, why am I saying two and a half? Because in my market, if you offer out anything less than that, I think it could end up affecting showings and how much they can get. The intention of today, again, was to equip you with the tools that you need so you can get your unfair share of listings in this market. And what I'm aware of is the market that we're going into right now, it's, we're, we're in it and it's the beginning of it, okay? It's not the end, it's the beginning. All of you guys would say to me, if we were in the room right now, if I could physically see you, I'd be like, how many of you guys wanna be the dominant listing agent in your marketplace? Everybody raise their hand. How many of you guys wanna make millions of dollars on real estate listed property in high volume? Everybody raise their hand. I'm like, great, I'm gonna give you a gift. I'm gonna give you a challenging market. Because what I want you to understand is it's the perfect environment to hone your skills. Right? I had a coaching client. She makes a million dollars a year. She's freaking out. She's got 20 listings, nothing selling. I'm like, hey, there's two ways to look about this. One is, oh man, market interest rates. The second is, is, oh yeah, I get to get great at price reductions. I get to become a ninja at price reductions. Right? Like this market provides you the opportunity to become a force in the marketplace. It provides you the opportunity to become the agent that you want to become, to be great at presenting, to be great at the listing presentation, to be great at handling objections, to be great at closing. And the truth is, is that people need our help. Make yourself into an agent that can help people in any marketplace, not just when it's good. Because if you're only can help people when it's good, you're an order taker. You're not a salesperson. So, you know, again, we appreciate you taking the time to be with us here today. Our intention, hey, drop in the chat if we over-delivered. Drop in the chat if we over-delivered. <laughs> drop in the chat if you would have paid a lot of money to spend time with us and do this. 100%, cool. boom, nice, run, fire, right? Good, good. You've been running away. Stop doing that. Yep, so the so we, we, we want to say thank you for everybody that obviously came. Um, at this point, the listing presentation class is over. Uh, we're going to be planning one of these every single month. However, uh, we do want to offer an opportunity for all of you guys. Aaron and I are part of a company called EXP Realty. If anybody has ever been curious about the company, meaning wanting to learn more and kind of some of the benefits of partnering up with us, Aaron and I actually do one of these every single week with our teams. He does one on Wednesdays. I do one on Fridays where we go over our uh, EXP family and we basically give them all this goodness every single week for free. So if anybody wanted to stick around, kind of see what the company has to offer and what the benefits that you get, you're welcome to stick around. For everybody else, like I said, we're not going to sell you guys anything. We thank you guys. We won't take it personal if you guys leave. If you guys don't want to stick around, we won't take it personal. But if you're an open-minded individual and you're curious as to how to potentially build multiple streams of income and grow your business at the same time by partnering with us, stick around and uh, we're going to get started with an EXP presentation. Uh, we don't expect... Uh, you guys to stay. We won't cry. We won't uh, do anything. But for those of you that are interested, we're going to share with you guys the benefits of being with us. So yep. cool, guys.